Good morning. Welcome here to another Sunday morning with Paul and Angie Wagler from AriseNow.ca. Well, Angie, we are delighted to be back again here on a Sunday morning and to have opportunity to share with each one of you. Thank you so much for being a part of uh, this with us in this journey and for checking out what we have to share. And we pray God's blessing on you today and every day. Right. So, Paul, we have been doing a study on Psalm 25. Show us your ways. We've got a nice path behind us. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the, a picture of us in our walk with the Lord. We are on a path. We are trying to figure out uh, his ways. That's right. And, oh, and we want him to teach us and show us his ways. Yeah, like David says in, uh, which we talked about, I think two or three weeks ago, Psalm 25, verse four and five, he says, uh, show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth and teach me for you are God, my savior. My hope is in you all the day long. All the day long. Yeah, and, <laughs> and so he's saying, show me, teach me, guide me. And, and I love how he starts the Psalm, which we've said uh, before as well. He says, to you, O Lord, I lift my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions, everything internally within me, I lift it up to you. In you, O God, I put my trust. And what a wonderful declaration to make uh, each and every day, maybe mm -hmm. even several times through the day if we need to remind ourselves. Right, right. And, and speaking of reminding ourselves, last week we looked at verse 6, which is remember your great love and mercy, O Lord, for they are from of old. And so we spoke about reminding the Lord. Uh, we, we need to remember the things that he has done. And then right. in... in, in or the things that he's promised. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the things that he's spoken, right? Right. And, and then in that journey, we can remind the Lord about things. Right. Uh, and encourage him to remember. That's and right. And we looked at uh, how Moses did that, how Daniel did that, and how in Acts chapter 4... Uh, the apostles did that. And then we concluded with praying like the apostles prayed that we would be filled and uh, with the power of the Spirit so we could speak the Word of God with right. boldness. And so we'd love to hear from you how your week has been yes. with that. That's right. Uh, but we, as it goes, we sometimes don't get to what we had intended to get to, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which was verse 7. We were going to do 6 and 7 last week, and, um, and we just really focused on that verse 6. So yeah. now today we're going to go on to verse 7. Right, and so we had entitled last week, Remember and Forget. Right. But we only did the remember part. It right. was remember, like as David is saying in, this, in these two verses, 6 and 7, he's saying to the Lord, remember... Remember what you've done. Remember your great yeah. love and mercy. Mm -hmm. And then the very next verse, he's saying, now please forget some things. Yes. You know, I'm looking back over my life and I see that there's a lot of mistakes that I've made. You know, he says, uh, remember not the sins of my youth right. and my rebellious ways. So I'm going to just read those over verses six and seven again okay. All right. um, from Psalm 25. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. So remember this, remember this based on your goodness, and then don't remember this. So forget, forget this. So sometimes there's some things we want God to forget. Right. And that's what he's voicing here in this Psalm. And th this is, we're gonna look today at a number of verses that tell us that God is gonna forget about our sins. Right. When we, we come to him and, and we confess It's a pretty good deal. Them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's and a pretty so, good deal. So, Angie, uh, if you want to look up Psalm 103, verse 12, and, and then I'm going to turn to Jeremiah 31. And, uh, and we invite you to follow along in your Bibles as we go through these different verses. It's good for you, us to uh, not only hear the word, but to see it written in front of us. Uh, it helps us to remember things. So uh, what does Psalm 103, verse 12 tell us? As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Okay. Transgression is another word for sin. Has a little bit of a different flavor on it, but yeah. basically it's S same idea. Same idea. Um, yeah. As far as the east is from the west, how far is that? 
Well, never tw shall the twain touch. Yes, Isn't that kind of a saying. I probably, so I probably slaughtered that. But anyways, <laughs> I, think, I think you said it very well. Never, I, I, ne'er is it maybe ne'er, ne'er shall, shall the, the two, twain touch. Two, two, two. <laughs> I don't know. They don't. They don't come close to each other. No, one no. goes on and on forever one way, and one goes on for uh, forever right. the other way. Because and they, 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 there's a, like they don't. They don't come close to each because other. Because if I decide, I, you know, the saying used to be, go west, young man, go west, right? So if I go west, well, how far should I go west? Well, it's like, I'll just keep going. Well, I go west, I go to the western side of Canada, and then I cross over the ocean, and and I go through Asia, and then uh, through, I don't know, all the Europe. countries of Europe, and then, and then back across the uh, ocean back home again. again. And, 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 I've, and I've gone west. <laughs> I haven't ever gone east, right? And then I could just, you just keep going. Yeah. And so that is a wonderful imagery that is given here in Psalm 103. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far he has removed our transgressions from us. Yeah. What a beautiful promise. That is a wonderful uh, verse to have uh, in our hearts uh, because there's times, and, and all of these verses that we're gonna look at today are good reminders um, things to, to help build a core, a solid foundation in our life so that when uh, the enemy comes and tries to remind us of the horrors and the, 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 the trouble that we've caused uh, because of the sins and the choices we've made and we've all, you know, done some things that shouldn't have been done and we've all said some things that shouldn't have been said. Right. Uh, and, and, but, no one is without sin. Right. No one has done everything perfect. Well, yeah, Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. um, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. No, I think that I missed that. The wages of sin is death, um, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then three, uh, Romans 6, 23 and 3, 23, I always get these two mixed up. And then the other is for all have sin, for all have sin and fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah, and then... Anyway, there, there, it's all in there. I'm getting a little more, a little more in a Pennsylvania Dutch word for huddled as I go on with this. Uh, huddled. <laughs> so for huddled. As far as the east is from the west, Jeremiah 31. Uh, let's look at. Um, well, let's look at verse 34. Okay, this is a passage that is uh, referred to in Hebrews 10, which we did a series on earlier in the year. Right. When uh, the writer Living of Hebrews, in confidence. yeah, the the writer of Hebrews refers to some verses here. Um, but I'm going to start. Um, uh, well, it, in verse 31, he says, "The time is coming," declares the Lord, "when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel," and and then he's uh, jumping down to verse 34. Or verse 33, I like this. Um, this is the covenant I will make with them after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds. I will write it on their hearts. Mm -hmm. So it's not an external thing anymore. It's going to be an internal thing. Right. No longer, this is verse 34, no longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. This is for everyone, not just some few special people. This is a covenant that the Lord wants to make with everyone. Yes. Uh, and then the very last part in verse 34 is what we want to highlight on this theme that we're talking about. For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no, no more. more. As far as the east is from the west. They're gone, right? Yeah. He'll remember them no more. And so when David is, uh, is praying this, um, is saying this to the Lord in Psalm 25, verse 7, remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. Uh, God, uh, you know, declares throughout Scripture that, this is, that he's going to do that when we come to him. Do you know what I kind of like about um, when he says, um, you know, the sins of my youth? Uh, what is a youth? A youth is somebody who's not fully mature, right? Mm -hmm. And so remember not um, the sins that I did when I didn't know any better. Yeah. Right? When I didn't have enough um, experience in life or experience with God that um, I just sought my own way and I did my own thing, you mm -hmm. know? Like, forget that because I know you now in a different way. Right. Right. I know you now in a different way. Can we just leave that behind? 
Yeah. Can can we move forward? Yeah. It reminds me, Angie, of a verse that I um, like to refer to in the teaching that I do about intentional thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, where Peter writes and he says, Therefore, pre therefore prepare your minds for action. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Then in verse 14 it says, Do not conform any longer to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Right? And so there's this part of sometimes that we don't know better. Mm -hmm. and, 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 but now that we have learned uh, that there's a new way for right. us to walk, right. uh, we are called not to conform any longer to those old ways. Mm -hmm. And we are to walk in the new ways. Right. But the grace and the mercy of God in all of this is that when we do mess up, because invariably we will at one point or another, we can right. come to him. And one of the verses that you used to say in your Lutheran liturgy every Sunday was 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. So, if, if we confess our sins, right. he is faithful and just to forgive us those sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to make it just as if we didn't do it. Right, right. And and so our right? our job in all of this is simply to confess, to yeah, say, is acknowledge. I messed up. It's acknowledge what we've done. Yeah. And, and you know, when, yeah. when people who deal with people with addictions and stuff say the, the first step in somebody's road to freedom is admitting that they have a problem, mm, right? Mm -hmm. The first step for you and I uh, to find freedom in our life is when we admit that we're a sinner mm -hmm. and that we have failed and we have uh, messed up really bad. Right. And, and so we come and we confess our sins and he is faithful and just, will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That means they're washed away as far as the east is from the west. Jeremiah 31 verse 34, that he will remember our sins no more. Then I wanna bring in another verse that I have here. Isaiah chapter one, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. So that speaks of a cleansing. It's kind of like what David prayed in Psalm 51, verse 7, when, when in Psalm 51 is the, is the prayer, of the cry of David's heart after he realizes the horrible sin that he has committed with his adultery with Bathsheba and the murder of her husband. And Psalm 51 oh, here is what yeah. you're yeah. referring Ver, what's to. Verse, what's verse 7 say? Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. I, I was thinking about this and I noticed you had it in your notes late for later on, but um, I was thinking about this because um, here in Psalm 25, uh, David is saying, remember not the sins of my youth. You know, when I was immature, you know, remember not, not those sins. But here in Isaiah 51, he's a growing man. He's a king of Israel. He knows better and he falls into sin. Yeah. You know, he embraces it. He walks right into it and he does a whole lot of dastardly yeah. deeds yeah, because of it. And what is he doing now? He's like, oh God, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Again, he's standing on the very foundation of who God is. Mm -hmm. He's like, I know this is true of you. And he's reminding God about his unfailing love. Yes. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Like I've done a, some bad stuff. Yeah. I have done some bad things, but I know you're still good. Mm -hmm. Will you do that for me? Will yeah. you cleanse me? Cleanse me from this stuff. And he says, cleanse me with hyssop, wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Yeah, and, and, you can do it because yeah. I can't do it in myself. Right, right. Like this is, like I've done some bad stuff. So like I am just offering myself back up to you. You can cleanse me because that's who you are. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white and as scarlet, snow. scarlet, like I'm, I'm, you know, there might be some other things, but I'm just thinking like, what do we... Um, use for like a stoplight? What do we use for a stop sign? Something that's very clearly visible. Yeah. Like that sticks out like a sore thumb. That could be red too. If, yeah. we... <laughs> if you hit it or pinch it. it somewhere. Right? Something that is clearly visible, clearly 
um, flags, mm -hmm. red flags go up, right? Yeah. Um, like, so those kinds of things in our lives that are clearly visible, like for all to see, God can turn that around in our lives mm -hmm. and and cleanse us from that. Yeah, that's the beauty of, of uh, this journey that we're on with Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, that we can be cleansed, we can be washed clean, we can be made whiter than snow. And and if you've seen some of our stuff before, I, I like to bring up this analogy or this thing about snow uh, often. So you may have heard it, um, but maybe you haven't. But I, I like standing out in a field of freshly fallen snow and looking around and just, it's so white. And, and, and then, to remember these promises of scripture that say the things all the 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 wrongs and the and the the things that we have committed uh sin against god and against others that have brought uh, pain and destruction and hurt uh into our lives and theirs that they can all be cleansed and 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 and, and washed away so that we can be even whiter than this snow and i'm like how do you get any whiter than snow well, only through the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. that he shed for us. And when we confess our sins, it is so beautiful. We are washed clean, made whiter than snow. We are cleansed of all unrighteousness. Um, it's, it's just this incredible promise that I just never tire of talking about uh, because I am so grateful for it. And we want to share that with you so that you can experience it if you've never experienced it today, that you can turn and surrender to Jesus and confess your sin to him and he will come and he will cleanse you he will wash you clean and you will be whiter than snow it will change your life so we invite you to do that today and uh and so we just want to highlight a couple other verses angie just to show that this is a theme throughout scripture and this right. by no means is the exhaustive list of verses that uh that talk about this but i'm going to look up isaiah 43 and you want to look up hebrews 8 12. Um, so Isaiah 43, verse 25, uh, God is speaking and he says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, you know, because God, who, who knows everything, he is choosing to remember our sins no more and he's not going to hold them against us. Yeah. Once we've confessed them and let them go. He lets them go. Yeah. As far as the east is from the west. So he's choosing for his own sake and uh, to blot out our transgressions and remembers our sin no more. What does the Hebrews 8.12 say? For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Right. Just uh, reinforcing this theme. So David is, is asking God to remember his great love and mercy for they are from of old remember not so you remember those things don't ever forget them <laughs> but please forget the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways all the things that i've done wrong uh accord then he goes on at the end of verse seven and he says according to your love O lord remember me for you are good mm -hmm. and really all of this that we're talking about flows out of the goodness of god uh, the, because of the goodness of God, it's his, the very core of his nature. It's who he is. He can't, everything that he does flows out of his goodness. And, and so because of that, his goodness uh, is, is just longing to be in relationship with us. And so because of that, his love then is the standard by which he thinks of us. Mm -hmm. Because David says to him, according to your love, O Lord, remember me, for you are good. Mm-hmm. And so that is a wonderful thing to, uh, to meditate on, that because of the way that God loves us, that's how he's going to think about us. Mm -hmm. And that's how he's going to remember us. And uh, that's how he's going to um, be at work in our lives each and every day, because he loves us. And all of that flows out of his goodness. And so, Angie, I think we're just going to uh, touch a wee bit more on the goodness of God. And then, or did you want to say something well, Before else? we get to that, because that's probably a whole show in itself. Um, I was thinking about when we are asking the Lord to remember not our sins. Right. I'm reminded of when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray. Right. And one of the things that Jesus taught them to pray 
in, in the Lord's Prayer was, um, forgive us our sins as... We forgive those who sin against us. Right. And, you know, I was thinking about that because I was thinking here in Psalm 25, David is saying, like, remember not, like, uh, you know, we're going to remember your goodness, but don't remember my, bad, my, my, my bad. badness. <laughs> yeah, my badness. <laughs> my badness. And, but there's other, there's other Psalms where David is, is expounding on the goodness of the Lord or whatever, um, but he's not asking him to not remember sin. He's mm -hmm. saying, remember what those guys did against me, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So David hadn't quite come to the point of what Jesus was teaching. Right. Of releasing some of that to the Lord. Like, forgive others as you've been forgiven, right? Like Jesus taught in Matthew, I believe it's Matthew 18 as well, about the unmerciful servant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so Jesus was teaching some principles about... Um, how to live and it's like we want to be forgiven touch my microphone we want to be forgiven and and we need to forgive others yeah. right and so we become like god mm -hmm. in some ways we want to take on his qualities we want to take on who he is in us and we can do that because you know as as new testament believers as mm -hmm. followers of jesus um, since Jesus' death and resurrection, we have the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in a way they didn't in the Old Testament, even though they could walk with the Spirit in some respects. We have the Holy Spirit, and we can um, live in a, in a way that um, is more complete mm -hmm. than what they had in the, in the Old Covenant. Yeah. We have a new covenant. Yeah, and it's, it's like what I um, said earlier from the Jeremiah 31 passage, the old covenant was more about external things. Mm -hmm. The law was something outside of them that they were trying to live up to. Right. And they were trying to keep, right? Mm -hmm. And it became kind of this this gritting your teeth and this you got to try harder today than I did yesterday. Right. And But then God's saying in Jeremiah 31, he's saying, I'm going to make a new covenant with them. And it's going to be different because now I'm going to put my law in their minds. I'm going to write it. I think he's going to put it in their hearts, write it on their minds, or vice versa. But it's going to be internal, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's about our hearts. And Jesus teaches that in the New Testament when, um, you know, in the Sermon on the Mount, when he says, you have heard that it was said, you know, if you look uh, or, or um, uh, do not commit adultery. But then Jesus says, which, you know, before, up to that point, the idea of adultery was an external thing. It was a man and a woman outside of marriage coming together and uh and 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 having sex and then that was considered adultery right yeah. and but jesus is saying no i am just going to change the standard because now it's about your heart he says i say to you that if you look at a woman to lust after her you have already committed adultery with her in your heart and so it's not about the external things it's about what's going on in the heart uh and 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 so jesus carries on in other places where the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, these religious leaders are upset because his, him and his disciples are eating food with unwashed hands and they're saying, oh, now you're unclean. And Jesus is like, no, it's not what goes into a person that makes him unclean, but it's what comes out. It's what's in your heart, right? And so it's all about our hearts in yeah. this journey. Mm -hmm. and, and so we want to um, keep, uh, be attentive to our hearts and take good care of them. Uh, and so I just want right, and that there's that verse that talks about um, how we guard our hearts because it's the wellspring of yeah. life. Proverbs four twenty three, one of my favorite verses. Above all else, guard your heart, for from it flow all the issues of life, yeah. or or for it is the wellspring of life. Right. Uh, and the, so that verse, I just love meditating on that because everything that we do in life flows out of our heart. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I've written a book that's going to come out in a little bit called five healthy habits of the heart of the heart yes mm -hmm. because that's what's going to determine our life but back to um you were talking about the lord's prayer there angie mm -hmm. from matthew 6 where jesus teaches us to pray and he says forgive others as um uh, forgive us our trespasses or our debts or our transgressions or different, our sins yeah different translations as we have forgiven those who trespass or sin against us right. but then i wanted to um just read verses 14 and 15 of matthew 6. 
Jesus says this. He's expounding on that, that idea of forgiving others. He says, For if you forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you and I do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Wow. That seems rather harsh, but yet that's the way that God has set it up. This is not an invitation that Jesus is giving us. This is a command that we are commanded to forgive others. And, and the reason uh, my experience has been is that if I don't forgive others, it doesn't hurt them. Uh, it hurts me uh, because, you know, it, it, it just works its way inside of me and then bitterness starts to grow. And as it tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, it says, uh, See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root springs up and by doing so defiles many. So bitterness uh, grows out of unforgiveness that isn't dealt with. Bitterness and resentment, right? And, uh, and they become this poison that destroys us. And, and uh, two ways I've heard uh, mentioned about forgiveness uh, towards others. One is that if, uh, if I don't forgive someone, I'm letting them live rent-free in my head. And what I mean by that is that, and you can probably attest to this, if there's been someone you've struggled to forgive, uh, they're in your thoughts often, right? And, and, and they're not asking to be in your thoughts. They're just, they're just, the thoughts are there because we haven't forgiven them, right? So we're thinking about them where they're probably not giving the least thought about us, right? True. Um, and then the other is... Well, is, and it's not just rent-free in your head because there could be all sorts of things that are going on with your body because you're right. um, consumed in your mind right. um, with some of these things, right? So, you know, so you, you might not be able to sleep and so then well, you could affect different, you know, your appetite could be affected, well, which your, could affect over, different things in your different health. systems of your body, yeah. right? So it, well, it has effects. If you want to do an interesting little Google search sometime, just type in, what are the effects of unforgiveness mm -hmm. in my body? And you'll be amazed. There's tons of articles that come up. A lot of them aren't, are, are maybe from Christian sources, and many of them aren't from Christian sources because people know, uh, people who study these things and work with people know that unforgiveness is, is it destroys us mm -hmm. uh, in so many ways. One of the other ways that, um, uh, I've heard it mentioned about unforgiveness is is that it's like um, having unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping it hurts someone else. Uh, and so when I heard that, I was like, oh, yeah, that seems really obvious. I should forgive. And that's what Jesus is saying here, that it's, it's, it's this important that if we don't forgive others, we can't be forgiven, yeah. right? And so, Angie, that's really... Um, excellent to bring in in this whole idea of that God wants to forgive us, remove our sins as far as the east is from the west, to cast them away into, you know, into the abyss, never to be for remembered again. Uh, but then we are also called to extend that same uh, grace and mercy towards yeah, and others. I just want to say a little bit about that. Like maybe you're struggling um, with something that's happened to you. Mm -hmm. um, that it's really hard to forgive, it's really hard to let go of that. I would, this is, I just wanna share with you kind of how I dealt with some of that in the past. It's, it's not necessarily that you're absolving them of all responsibility, you're just giving that to the Lord. Mm -hmm. He's the judge, it says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. It's, it's, it's just giving it to the Lord. And so to me, it's a releasing. And so, like, just be honest, have a conversation with God about it, and just be honest and say, Lord, like, I'm thinking again about um, so-and-so, and this is what they did to me, such and such, and um, I don't really know what to do with that, but I'm choosing today to forgive them. I am releasing them into your um, care, into your um, like I'm giving this whole situation to you. I'm releasing it to you and you do with it as you see fit. But 
as I release it to you, I ask that you would, my, my feelings, my emotions, my thoughts would all line up with this decision that I'm releasing this to you. Mm -hmm. And because you're not going to feel like you want to forgive anyone. No. It, it, it doesn't happen that way. It's a choice and it's a choice to be free. It's about freedom for us and really freedom for them. Sometimes they don't know. And sometimes depending on the situation, you can have a conversation with them about it. Some, sometimes that's a, a good way to go. Sometimes it's not a good way to go. Uh, we want to hear what the Lord wants to say mm -hmm. and we want him to lead and guide us right. in, in, in our life. Uh, but I just want to encourage you just to release those things. We don't want to live with that. Mm -hmm. We want to be free and we don't want those things to hinder us and to be triggered by those things in our lives. Yeah, that's excellent, Angie. Highlighting that. We don't want the hurt to go on and on yeah. and on and on. Highlighting right? that it's a choice that we yeah. make. And so, mm -hmm. so we want to encourage you today to, uh, to come to the Lord, confess your sin, uh, whatever it is that the Holy Spirit is stirring in you, whether you've confessed many things in the past or maybe this is the first time today that you're confessing your sin to the Lord and you're coming to Him. Either way, come to Him, confess it. Know then that He will forgive your sin and he will cleanse you, he will wash you clean, whiter than snow. And then we are then called to f extend that same grace, love and mercy to others and, uh, and ask him to help you with that. And we, if you wanna chat more about any of that, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, send us a message and uh, we'd love to interact with you and encourage you and, and, uh, and just pray with you and, uh, and trust that God will be at work in your lives in many wonderful ways as we journey on together with Jesus. So you can find our email at arisenow.ca. You can send us an email, or if you're here on um, Facebook, um, you can send so, us a private message yeah. through Facebook. Um, yeah, so yes, we would love to hear from you. Yeah, so we just want to pray God's blessing on you and, uh, and know that the Lord loves you and that he wants to cast your sins away as far as the east is from the west and remember them no more so he remembers his love and mercy and he forgets our sins what a great deal <laughs> it is that we have as followers of jesus well we pray god's blessing on you and until we meet again stay awake and stay alert